Now on tonight's special episode of Drake's Horde, we're going to do something I've been looking forward to for a while. We're going to see if we can fix the TV. Now, I've got a few other examples if this one decides not to play nice, but I think this is probably a good candidate because it's got a, um, a power standby light, but it still won't turn on. That is not a screw. It is fine. There we go. Whew. That bad boy is dusty. Just look at this business. Wow. And that buildup is just all through it. It doesn't even look like... It looks like a lot of drywall dust, actually. But that's not really the point. What we're looking for... The capacitor, hopefully on the power board, that so looks swollen or messed up. These all look fine. What about over here? Oh, there's no capacitor over there. Wow. Okay, so I blew all the dust off and plugged it in, and now it's making a low whine. And the sound changes a little bit. Do not know what that means. Um, the simple solution would be needs a new power cord, but I know only one of the components on this is giving trouble, so I think I'm just going to fiddle with my brand new multimeter and see if I can find anything that doesn't seem right, other than that sound, which is hard to pinpoint where it's coming from. Okay, so listen, I've been fiddling with this TV and I've tested all sorts of things. I can't find anything wrong with it. All of the capacitors seem to test fine. The diodes seem to test fine. There was a lot of dust on it. Um, I unplugged all the things. I'm looking for scorching on the back side. There isn't really anything except for where the chips themselves seem to be getting really hot, but that's pretty normal. Uh, so I'm just going to reassemble it and see if it does the same thing the keyboard did. Here we go. Sounds. That's weird. I'm going to see if I can get a recording of the sound for you guys. Yeah, so it changed. It used to be a... Um, it, it wasn't that high-pitched whine before. It was like a chirping. But it kind of sounds like it's coming from the, the transformer. Let's see if this thing turns on. I'll leave this here so you can uh, hear any changes. That's the chirping. Honestly, it just reminds me of a thing that's trying to start and failing to do it. Like there's a start capacitor. It's just not doing its thing <sighs> until now and then it changes to this sound so it works sometimes now let's turn it off now it's just the regular pitch noise now listen when I turn it back on So all in all, it's just kind of weird. If anybody can make any suggestions as to what that might be, it honestly just feels and sounds like a capacitor, but these all seem fine to be... Okay, I'm going to level with you. I did not test every single one of the capacitors because I was reading up how to do that. Apparently they have to be removed from the circuit in order to get a proper read. I don't have enough skin in the game to stress this much over TV that I can probably sell for 40 or 50 bucks. I'd like that 40 or 50 bucks, but if it's going to take me like days worth of work, then um, forget it. Not like I was the one who paid hundreds of dollars for this. Let's try something else. I found this and this the other day. So this thing is really fancy and it would work fine 
if the lamp wasn't burnt out. Replacement lamps are either $50 for the crap one or $400 plus dollars for the OEM direct replacement. Um, I'm going to buy neither of them and sell it as is, uh, needs lamp for cheap and uh, the next owner can decide which one. This however, <coughs> now I actually already tested this for power and it works just fine. I still need to try plugging different sorts of things in, but as far as I can tell, the only thing that's going to be wrong with it are the scratches on the screen. It's got scratches there and scratches here. Which doesn't make it garbage. Well, this seems to work fine. Well, this thing seems... Hey, faint! This thing seems to work great, so I'm just going to clean it up, and if I come up with something cool to uh, clean scratches off screens, I'll add that in. Okay, so here's the thing. We're not giving up that easily. This is our soldering iron. This is the same TV as before. I went and bought $13.50 worth of capacitors from our local electronics supply store, B&E Electronics. And uh, I'm going to replace almost all of them on this board and see if that was the problem. This is a common problem with Samsung TVs from this year, and the symptoms this one is having line up perfectly with uh, the replacing capacitors fixed it problems everybody on the internet is describing. So we're going to give it a go. And... Keeping our fingers crossed. And we're going to start with these ones. Now this is not the same table as before. That one was actually uh, sold and delivered. I'm so pleased about that. Hmm. I think I'm actually going to use a toothbrush to apply this flux. Um, little flux, little solder. Oops. Whatever. Um, I've been watching a bunch of videos and it seems that uh, new solder flows and gets picked up a lot easier than old solder. So we're going to blend it with flux to that too. Let's get it lifted. So um, DIY uh, solder removal wick is not really a great plan. It doesn't work fantastic. Most of what I've accomplished here is uh, not wicking away the solder so much as warming it up so it melts and then brushing it away with this copper floss that I've twisted together. And it is working so if you're absolutely in a pinch, you can definitely just pull apart some sort of a uh, copper wound motor, like a really small one off of a board somewhere, and uh, gather up all the copper floss. And it does work. It does pull the... That said, proper wick is not an expensive product, so it'd be a million times better, guaranteed. All right, most of the solder off of there, and then the capacitor's down here. So I'm just gonna keep one side warm and bend it to pop it out. And the other side. And one more go on both sides. Making sure not to close off those holes. And there we go. I told him 25 volts. Gave me the wrong stuff. Okay, so these ones are 470 microfarad, just like the one I removed, but these are at 50 volts and these are at 25 volts, uh, which the internet says will be fine, so I'm just going to go with it. Thankfully, all of the negative posts face the same direction. Negative is the one with the short lead and the stripe. And I'm just going to stuff that in there, hold it tight, and then bend the leads. 
so it doesn't go anywhere. I don't think it would be bragging to say that this is not the most interesting thing I have ever filmed. So I'm going to go through and do exactly that um, nine more times. And uh, you guys can come back when that part's done. Okay, I'm done. Got those all soldered in. The soldering was the easy part. Turns out this stuff is actually not that bad um, if you just uh, kind of draw it along after you've got the solder liquefied and if there's a little bit of solder already in there along with the flux the whole thing picks up a lot better just a little experience fingers crossed because after this one i am pretty much out of patience for this tv and out 13 bucks If anybody's watching this for soldering tips, I guess uh, the rosin toothbrush works just fine. Um, isopropyl alcohol cleans up that uh, rosin afterwards because it's a greasy mess. And uh, DIY solder wick is fine. There are better products on the market, but it's fine. Now, that looks pretty good with its nice fresh caps. I didn't replace this tiny one or this one because these are the ones that all of the uh, uh, people on the internet were replacing with good results. Oops. Would it even be a thub print video without a few hiccups? Kind of a lot of writing on this. Let's see if it sounds any different. It does sound different. Three, two, one. Yeah! Fix the TV! It's still kind of dusty. See, this thing I actually bought from my brother Quinn for his birthday. But low key, I really wanted to use it too. Does the same thing a can of compressed air does. It wasn't cheap, but neither are cans of compressed air. This is the other one from before. I did a really nice job of uh, cleaning the whole thing up. But uh, those scratches are still there. So I've heard that there's a solution to uh, fixing scratches like these ones with one of these white erasers. You're supposed to use a clean one. Um, I'm not going to go and uh, spend the time driving finding one um, just for this experiment. Instead, I'm just going to slice the sides off, like removing the mold from a block of cheese. There. It's gonna take a minute. See, you can kind of see the... Uh, you can barely see it, but like, those smears where I was working it, yeah, so that's where the scratch was. Um, you probably can't tell the difference, but it actually made a bit of a difference. This is shining in the... No. I'm not blown away, but it's not a complete letdown. See, the problem is these were quite heavy gouges. Like, those are some chunks right in there, and this one was like... You know when it gouges plastic and it gets like that fuzzy effect? So no, really deep scratches. This is not gonna um, make miracles happen. But... 
if you have light scratches, it does help. And no, Windex is not what you're supposed to use because apparently it can damage the anti-glare coating. But I don't actually know what you are supposed to use and whoever buys these is gonna get a great deal. So I think besides what we've already covered, the key takeaway here is that capacitors are not necessarily good just because they're not swollen. Um, I thought it would be as easy as looking for the swollen ones and replacing those. Um, so that was 13 bucks, well, 12.35 to fix this one, and uh, this one was fine. I'm just really glad that came out as a win. So, uh, two TVs for sale. Sweet. Um, we all learned something. Thanks for hanging out. Leave it better than you found it. Keep doing the thing.